Brett says on September 25th, he's in Los Angeles to do a guest appearance on the Simpsons. And when his lawyer, Barry Bloom tells him that Eric Bischoff wants to meet with him, uh, whenever he gets to Los Angeles. So when Brett lands, I guess to the hotel, Eric's already on his way to his room. And Eric says something like, what's it going to take to bring you to WCW? And Brett says, I want the exact same contract as Hulk Hogan plus one penny. Of course, Bischoff says he can't do anything like that right now. And, uh, Brett says, I'm not really looking to go anywhere. I'm happy where I'm at. And Eric persists. Come on, at least give me something I can go back to my people with. And Brett says, I'd think about coming to work for you guys for $3 million a year in a lighter schedule. And Eric actually says, well, at least I have a number now. Let me take it back to the Turner people in Atlanta. Two days later on September 27th, Bischoff calls and offers Brett a contract for 2.8 million a year for three years to go to WCW. And Brett says he'd think about it. Well, of course, rumors get out because of Carl DeMarco. Carl DeMarco calls and tells Vince what's up. And then Vince calls and says, Hey, I'm hearing rumors that you've already signed. He says, no, I haven't signed and I won't do anything until we talk. So they talked that weekend and Brett's asking for $3 million for three years for 180 days a year. And he wants Vince to match it. Vince says he can't match it. So he gives him the best offer he can. Um, and he promises to make this offer in person. And he does so on October 9th, he flies up to Calgary and does it in person. And during the meeting. Brett would tell Vince about the wrestling with shadows documentary and Vince said he had no problem giving Paul access to the matches in the backstage area. Before we continue about the contract, do you think if Brett wouldn't have brought this up at this moment where he's trying to resign him, there's any fucking chance wrestling with shadows gets made? Probably not. And, and see, you know, there's another big part that, you know, I don't, I don't think I've ever really shared. Well, I have in, in some different things, but, um, you know, the, the big part that's missing there was during this same time frame that Hulk Hogan's contract with WCW was coming up. I've actually got that in my notes here and that's, that's how Vince helps close the deal. Right. And well, no, not really. I mean, it, it was, we, <laughs> we had many a late night. Uh, at the office kind of going over, you know, figures and, and who's it going to be? Do we invest X amount in trying to get Hulk or do we invest X amount in keeping Brett? Uh, is it a big enough get for the WWF to bring Hogan back or, and, and let them take Brett or do we keep Brett and focus on him? Meltzer wrote one of the interesting keys to the story is that And I think everybody listening to this knows that Brett had still been pissed off since 1993 when Hogan left without putting Brett over, he feels like that wasn't done the right way. The whole WrestleMania deal, what was maybe going to happen at SummerSlam, he feels like he's kind of been jilted by Hulk Hulk Hogan. So you would think that would be a negative. You don't want to go to WCW and have to work with Hulk Hogan and Ric Flair, who you've had problems with. But somewhere in these negotiations, Vince says something like Hogan and Randy Savage's WCW contracts are both coming due between now and the end of the year. And he suggested it was possible or even more than possible that one or both of them might actually wind up back in the WWF in 97, which of course makes you think that Brett might see this as an opportunity to finally get this return win and get this win over Hulk Hogan. I feel like this is a pretty masterful thing for Vince to drip out here, because if you know that it's a hot button of Brett's that he really, really wants to be Hulk Hogan because he takes his character very seriously. Maybe that's pretty smart. No, that wasn't what he pitched. And and it was never the, that was never even considered because it was an either or situation. But Brett Brett, Brett probably didn't know it was an either or. I, I, I believe that there were probably in Brett's mind and people, you know, on the outside going, Hey, Hogan's contract's coming up. I hear he's talking to Vince and Brett thinking, Oh, I can get this done in his mind. But truly from, and I was a hundred percent a part of all of that. Um, that was never the case. It was an either or situation. Um, and we had to pick them. 
and we pick Brett. I'm not suggesting it wasn't either or. I'm just saying Brett may not have known it, and it may have been something that Vince could just float out there. What if? And it, it'd be attractive. Ultimately, Vince offers Brett a 20 year deal for ten and a half million. It's one and a half million dollars a year for three years as a wrestler. $500,000 for the next seven as one of his senior advisors, and then $250,000 a year after for the next 10 years, which, uh, I guess makes him like the Babe Ruth of the company. And then Vince said something like, I'll never give you a reason to ever want to leave. And Brett said, WCW was offering almost that same amount for three years, but he just couldn't leave Vince. So he accepted the offer and they shook hands. Meltzer would write after a bidding war, the likes of which have never been seen in this profession. Brent Hart appears to be likely choosing the world wrestling federation for a deal that may pay him more over four years than any wrestler in history with the exception of Hulk Hogan has made in a career. Was there instant regret about offering Brett such a deal? It feels like everybody feels like this was a bad deal from the jump. No, not from, not from the jump. No. And because we were looking at, it was a defensive move in many regards. It was both offensive and defensive, but a lot of it was defensive. We didn't want him to go to WCW. We felt that that, that was a hit that would have hurt us much more so than, than the other ones. The other ones were hurting us. You know, it seemed like every other day that people were heading over to WCW. So we didn't want one of our biggest stars you know, a homegrown star to, to go there as well. And the math, the math worked. Um, Neville Meyer, who was the CEO at the time is the one who, who kind of orchestrated this whole thing as far as a way to, to structure the deal. And it made sense at the time. One of the things I found interesting is, uh, the way Meltzer reported this story. Once it was signed, he would say that Titan sources said McMahon didn't come anywhere close to that $3 million WCW offer, but WCW sources say not only did he match it, he upped it and sources close to heart basically confirmed the WCW story and claim McMahon offered just under $4 million per year for a four year deal, which is more than one would think the company could even afford given the revenue it takes in. Allegedly the $4 million per year number is not all in cash, but with a series of goodies that all added up, if liquidated would come to $4 million a year. Um, he goes on and on about how nobody besides Hulk Hogan has ever even earned that amount of money in their career, much less over a three or four year period. When you guys hear about this $4 million number, which is clearly inaccurate, but Brett's people are confirming it and WCW is confirming it which is good for business. I get it. I mean, is this just passed around the office and everybody's laughing Four million dollars a year? There's no chance. No, there's no chance. It's just complete fabrication. But, but again, that's the kind of stuff that Dave Meltzer reports his fact and thing. Yeah. I'll give you a fact. You want me to talk numbers? I'll give you numbers. You know what my budget was that year to, for the entire roster. What? $9 million. So it was my budget. Your 1996 budget was 9 million. Right. So yeah, you're not going to give, uh, almost half of that to one guy. Right. Uh, we should mention here because we're going to talk about this later in a different way. Brett's old deal was signed in September of 1992, and it gave him the option to leave at any time he wanted with a 90 day notice. He negotiated that when he learned the hard way in 92, when he tried to leave for WCW while still the intercontinental champion. Let me say that again. In 1992, but nobody talks about this. Brett is the intercontinental champion and tries to leave the world wrestling federation for WCW while he's the intercontinental champion. But apparently those contracts were automatically renewable and only allowed the 90 day notice during a certain window each year. So when Brett discovers this and resigns is forced to resign, he says, okay, but now I can leave anytime I want with a 90 day notice. Smarten everybody up who might not be on the loop about the time that Brett tried to jump to WCW in 1992. Well, uh, my name is Tony Schiavone and I wasn't there. I wasn't there when he did that. Well, but you heard about it. So do what you do every other time. I ask you a question, make some shit up. <clears throat> okay. Well, he, he wanted to go and he said, I'm leaving. No, um, the, 
the issue is, is like on the auto auto renewal is you had by the, you had 90 days before your contract renews to, to give your notice one way or another. And obviously Brett didn't know that clause exists in his contract. Otherwise it just, it just renews. Um, so I, I had heard the rumblings, but nobody, nobody really took it seriously because he was under contract and, and on the WWF side, they just felt that, that was a bunch of rumor and innuendo and bullshit because he couldn't go anywhere. So they, they were protected. So he agreed to this contract just a little while before the, the Fort Wayne, Indiana raw on October 21st, 1996. And in this promo, he does a live interview where he acknowledges the offer from a rival wrestling company, which he praised and said they handled him honestly and with integrity and, um, you know, they were good guys, but Vince wanted him in the middle of this to tear up the WCW contract on live TV. And of course, this is supposedly the idea for retaliation after Medusa threw the women's belt in a trash can. Do you remember asking Brett to tear up the WCW contract on TV? I hadn't heard that before. No, no. And it was, it was as simple as, you know, Brett coming out and give us your decision. Now, you know, Vince K faved everybody on what his decision was. I know that Vince knew and I knew, but there was still that, that tinge of we're live. He had played games with us all the way up into this point. Is he going to get out there on live TV and, and, and go the other way? So there was that tinge, that unknown and that uneasy feeling, um, with everybody. Oh my God. Cornette was going nuts. Oh damn. What's he going to do? So I guess we'll find out. It's worth mentioning when WCW was offering him 2.8 million a year, only 800,000 of that was supposed to be for wrestling. And that's for 180 dates. Uh, the other $2 million came from two movies per year at $1 million per movie. And that was going to be through Turner, Tom Warner. And they were trying to structure a deal that was similar to Hulk Hogan, where WCW wouldn't have all the expense on their books. So it would still look like they were running a profitable company. Uh, and allegedly this whole contract with Brett gets everybody fired up in WCW because according to the rumor and innuendo, Hall and Nash have a clause in their contract that says they have to be the highest paid behind Hogan. So if somebody comes in and gets a bump, well, they get a bump too. So allegedly they're making around seven eighty a year. So if it's just 800,000 for wrestling and it's structured that way, then they only get a $20,000 bump. But if those movies aren't stipulated, now it's a $2.8 million contract. And those guys are getting an extra 2 million a year. Has anyone in wrestling ever negotiated such a clause like that before or after that, you know, of. Not that I know of. That was the first time I'd ever heard it. And the last time that I know of anybody ever getting something like that. I just find, um, that whole signing thing really fascinating. Uh, we should mention here that the WCW contract was in his back pocket, according to the rumor and innuendo when he did that promo, 